For collectors of vases, there are a multitude of shapes, colors, patterns, and sizes to choose from. Glass vases have been made for decades. One specific type that has an intriguing shape is the Jack in the Pulpit vase. From this small collection, you can see that there is quite the assortment of shapes, sizes, and colors. I came across an article on these vases a number of years ago that I found interesting, so saved it in case I ever had the inspiration to study it further for a presentation. The name pulpit might make us think of a church with a preacher giving us weekly sermons, but Jack in the Pulpit brings to mind the unique North American wildflower. Most of you are familiar with this plant shown on the left. Was this flower the inspiration behind the creation of this attractively shaped vase? Where was it first made? Vases of this shape have been produced for about 170 years in the glass making areas of England. Similarly shaped vases dating back to 1854 have been found in archival pattern books of Stevens and Williams, which leads to the speculation that uh, the idea for the design could have come from a common wildflower throughout the UK called Lords and Ladies, pictured on the right. British glassmakers at that time did not give names to products. They identified them by pattern numbers, size, and batch details, many attached to detailed drawings. Record books show many English glassmakers producing this shape of vase from about 1880 to 1905. A researcher by the name of David Isset, who was an avid collector of these intriguing vases, spent some time with a curator of the private museum of Stevens and Williams, which originally was a former house built for John Northwood II when he joined the company in the late 1890s. The museum held many historic books. David Isset searched out other old pattern books from the same era and found examples of the Jack in the Pulpit style vase made in many English glass manufacturing companies, most of which no longer exist. Stan Evison, a production director for Thomas Webb and Sons, once went into a storage area and found a room full of Jack in the Pulpits of sizes ranging from 12 inches to as tall as 60 inches. They were made in the colors of ruby gold, plain crystal, and a light green crystal. Ruby gold is the name cranberry glass was called by English glassmakers at the turn of the century. The larger ones were known, known as floor standing vases for dried flower arranging, such as dried pampas grass. Learning about this helped David Isset to spot one of the taller vases in the back of a cabinet at an antique center in Adamstown, Pennsylvania. With raising pulse, he looked at the price, expecting it to reflect that it was made by Thomas Webb and Sons, but he was able to purchase it for only $44 a collector's dream. And this was probably in the 1990s. Many English glass ma makers made variations of the Jack in the Pulpit form. Crystal collars were added or chain work applied to the stem. And in some cases, the stems were twisted. This is one of my vases and I don't know anything about it, but I think it's old, probably English, or bohemian, and you'll notice the chain work trailing down the stem and the petal feet. Thomas Webb and Sons were known to make twisted stems. Many with twisted stems had applied petal feet to add support. Okay. This is also 
one of mine. And again, I don't know anything about it. I've seen similarly shaped ones that are obviously modern, but this one has an older feel and appearance. It has quite the twist at the base of the stem. Other major glass companies, such as Royal Stewart and Richardson's, who operated out of the Wordsley Flint Glass Works at Stourbridge, manufactured this alluring shape. On the left, you can see a Thomas Webb and Sons in misty pink with a turnover collar, crimped green rim, and ribbed stem with trail work, with, with trailing chain work. On the right, it's possibly a Richardson's of Stour Bridge, a height of 18 and a half inches from 1890. Most of these next pictures were identified on the internet. What a difference in shape of these two pieces. Richardson's design was found in a pattern book for the year 1876, bearing the number 9165. It was six inches high with a rounded trumpet. Many smaller British companies were also competing with the bigger ones in producing variations of this popular style. Some very beautiful and creative designs of Jack in the Pulpit came from Europe during the 19th century, notably Bohemian, Austrian, and Italy. The Bohemian one is a part of my collection. I was, prized, I was pleased to find information about it on the internet. The Austrian piece is probably Lotz, sold in 2010 for $1,750 US. The Italian one is very modern. Lotz was a premier Bohemian, now the Czech Republic, glass manufacturer found in 1840 in southwest Bohemia by Johann Lotz. The company was sold many times, at, time to at times to descendants. At the Paris World's Exhibition in 1889, the company was introduced to Art Nouveau, and they realized that this was the way to go. The next number of years were very successful. And these are two beautiful pieces of Lotz. There were struggles later with poor management, depression years, a fire in 1930 and the war. The company closed in 18 or 1947. 100 years, 107 years later. Around the turn of the century, Louis C. Tiffany of Tiffany Studios, 1902 to 1932, coined the name Jack in the Pulpit to describe a style of vase with a large collar pulled down at the front and high at the back, resembling the North American wildflower. Tiffany and Stuben appear to be the first American glassmakers to produce this design. This Tiffany vase is in the famous Favril glass from 1915. Favril glass was made by different colors being combined, then blown, sometimes twisted, or twirled on the gather to achieve effects of flowers, lava, or marble. Tiffany and Stuban Studios both benefited from several English master glass designers who left England to start up glass making in the States. Some of Tiffany's most beautiful pieces were iridized. They are still very pricey today. I recently noticed one that had just sold at a Sotheby auction for $10,625 US. It was iridized, signed, dated 1904 to 06, 19 inches tall and 10 and a quarter inches in diameter. An interesting company that I found while looking for Jack in the Pulpit vases is Cazelle Art Glass and Decorating Company, 
in Brooklyn, New York, 1901 to 1924. Its founders included Martin Bach Sr. and Thomas Johnson, who both worked for Tiffany and Company. Gazelle was known for bold iridescent colors, especially blue, gold, purple, white, and green. Okay, there we go. Here are three examples of their work. It was thought the company had been named after a person, but in fact, it was named after a beautiful rare bird, the resplendent Quetzal that resides in Central America. Carl and I actually saw one of these birds in Costa Rica a number of years ago. It's a big bird with a body of 14 to 16 inches in length, plus up to a 25 inch tail on the male bird. The colors are resplendent, as are the colors of Cazelle glass. I've noticed a couple of their vases that were sold for the price of 15 to $20,000 US. Many are now museum pieces. Apart from Tiffany and Stuban, perhaps the most notable American company that manufactured this style of vase was Fenton Art Glass in Williamstown, West Virginia. In their earlier catalogs, Fenton called this shape tulip vase. Now they are referred to by other names, by either name. Fenton Archives show that many fine examples of this style were made throughout their history. The one on the right is from my little collection. I was pleased to find the exact one on the internet giving me all the information, the color and the style. Checking on eBay, there are all kinds of colors, sizes and shapes of Fenton glass pieces currently for sale. With the introduction of carnival glass at the turn of the century, Fenton, plus many other US companies, manufactured the carnival glass version of the Jack in the Pulpit vase and continued to do so for many years. Kanawha Glass Company in West Virginia, founded in 1953, and named after the Kanawha River, manufactured many animal figures and various styles of vases, including the Jack in the Pulpit. I found a very modernistic version interesting. I recently noticed one on eBay for $19, then found one for $32, and another one for 106. I didn't check closely to see if there was a difference in the size, but the color was the same. They also made crackle glass, which we are familiar with. Some of their glass was hand blown, free formed, or made in molds. The company closed in 1987. Contemporary art glass. Jack in the pulpits are still very popular. Apparently, the shape is challenging to produce. Carl Radke of Phoenix Studios in Harmony, California, makes beautiful examples in stunning colors. He commented that when he blows this style of vase, the rejection rate is far, far higher than that of other forms. He states that they are very hard to manufacture. He created special tooling to accomplish making them. To iridize them is tenfold more difficult. This piece is currently selling for $750 US. According to Radke, and I quote, when making jacks, many hundreds of them made it to no further than the floor and many were sold as seconds. Another company in Davenport, California, 
is Lundberg Studios Contemporary Art Glass. It began in the backyard heart shop of hot shop of founder James Lundberg in 1970. Today, they are well known for gift glass, including vases, scent bottles, lamps, and shades. Here are a couple of their pieces. I noticed one of his iridescent 13 inch vases for sale recently for $2,240 Canadian after a discount of 30%. Just two weeks ago, as I was browsing eBay for Jack in the Pulpit vases, I noticed one made by Chalet Glass when it was located in Cornwall from 1962 to 1974. It was in an olive green color, listed as rare, signed and dated 1971, asking $575. Then I found a second one, same color, asking $898. And personally, I don't find this color very appealing. I checked a lot of other chalet glass images but couldn't find any other Jack in the Pulpit vases made by them. Angelo Rossi from Rossi Glass in Niagara Falls has created many of these vases in beautiful colors. Does this one look familiar? Yes, it was a table favor at our 2008 Glass Facts Conference. Rossi Glass Niagara has been in business for the past few decades with artisans from Bohemia, Ukraine, Venice, and of course, Canada. They take great pride in their hand-blown glass without the use of machines. No doubt, Asian countries have taken up the challenge of manufacturing this style of vase over the years and in recent times. If you go online and Google Jack in the Pulpit vase, you will find that there are all kinds of them being sold on eBay or Etsy. Two weeks ago, there were almost 1,000 of them on eBay. A lot of them just say vintage, as it's very hard to identify the manufacturer when there is no trademark, label, or other ID mark. Interestingly, a couple of them listed as vintage, defined vintage as prior to the year 2000. I really had to sh shake my head at that. There are a lot listed as Fenton, quite a few Murano, some Lotz, Bohemian, Lundberg, or occasionally UK. You've seen some of the pictures I've captured from there. Before I thought about this topic as a presentation, I had two of these vases. The first was a Christmas gift from Carl quite a few years ago. It was a piece of Reuven glass by Nouveau Art Glass Company in Toronto. And this is it, my piece. This company started up in 1982 and is still going strong. My second one in spatter glass is the Rossi vase given as a favor at our Glass Facts Conference. Two is not a collection and not enough to have as examples for a presentation, thinking I'd be giving it in person. So I went on the hunt. I found some pieces coming up at a Shackleton auction close to home. So I went to take a look at them, saw three I liked, so made bids and they came, came home with me. I've talked about a couple of these earlier. Now I have a collection. During the summer, we had a few day trips with visits to antique malls. I found the Fenton Jack in the Pulpit vase that I took a fancy to at a price I was willing to pay. I have since seen a couple of them on eBay, selling at three times more than I paid. So that made me feel pretty good. Again, we viewed another auction at Shackleton's where I saw one vase, the clear and cranberry 
or ruby gold, as the English would say, that I thought would add nicely to my little collection and make a good showpiece. So home it came. About a month ago, Carl and I were going to the cottage with the kids. So on the way, we just had to stop at the Barry Antique Mall. There, I spotted a clear glass Jack in the pulpit vase at such a low price and kind of interesting design that it couldn't be left there. After some, doing some searching on the internet, I recognized it as a Westmoreland piece, then confirmed it on the EAPGS pattern ID site. There are quite a few Westmoreland vases for sale on eBay, all with basically the same shape and hexagonal base. They're in a few different colors, and one is in clear with a silver overlay on the collar and foot, dated possibly 1900s. The opening picture is, my, is of my collection with the West, West, minus the Westmoreland vase. And that's it. I'm not intentionally looking for any more, even though I've seen some very beautiful ones researching for this presentation. If one just happens to turn up that is very reasonable and beautiful, perhaps a Thomas Webb, no doubt I could be tempted. I have just a few more pictures that I would like to share. These are two American glass pieces, American pieces from 1890. The variation is especially noticeable in the collars. Here are examples from another two companies that made the Jack and the Pulpit Paws, Boston and Sandwich Glass and H. Northwood and Company. And these are very beautiful. The one on the left is rare, Thomas Webb striped Vaseline glass with crimped rim circa 1890. The center one is a Victorian era, circa 1890, amber and ruby with white stripes under the surface. And I actually found this one, it's uh, currently for sale in Australia for 120 Aust uh, Australian currency, and I, I'm not really sure what that is. And the one on the right is mine. I don't know anything about it but I think it's kind of cool and probably old. This Duben set I found interesting. The color is ivorine. I noticed a three set just like this one sold at Jeff Evans in January, 2020 for $500. Currently, there is just the one set on the left called Double Jack in the Pulpit for sale on eBay for $2,303 or best offer. And I can't help but wonder if it's the same one from the three set that Jeff sold. I have one more picture and this one is for Judy. Judy and I both have this vase, but in green instead of cobalt blue. I've never thought of it as a Jack in the Pulpit vase, but interestingly, it's also called a calla lily vase. And I've noticed a few other pieces called Jack in the Pulpit calla lily vase. As you can see, the Jack in the Pulpit vase comes in many sizes, forms, and colors. It's definitely a very shapely vase. Thank you.